Hey everybody, uh, Necro VMX here, and this is a video that I wanted to do for a while. I mean, not like a long time, but like the last couple of weeks or so. And I just want to address a couple of things and really just talk to you guys, you know, because I've realized a couple of things about YouTube and the channel and whatnot. And um, gaming channels in general have been on the decline mostly because there are so many of them you know there was a time when the, i was getting like a, an insane amount of subscribers every day like i'm talking like 60 to 80 per day and you know the way it's been lately it's more like 10 you know which is fine i uh, i don't mind slow growth and i I've, I've said it in the past i, I just want to get this out here i want to say that by no means am i quitting you know I don't care how many people view the videos because um, here's the thing. Viewership is down for gaming channels across the board. And you know what else is down is revenue. And I never really cared much about being a partner or doing ads. and I put ads in the videos because every once in a while I get some money from YouTube and you know, it helped pay the bills in the past. There was a time where I was making, you know, like quite a bit each month. And uh, now it's not so much, but I always just sort of looked at it as found money. I never intended it to be uh, like a third source of income for me. I never intended to live off YouTube. I never intended that YouTube would be a career, and it never will be. Um, and I think that people who try to make YouTube their career are slightly delusional. I mean, you can have success stories like PewDiePie, who makes millions of dollars a year, but unless he hangs on to that money, because one day that star will fall, you know what I mean? And who knows what, will be, what, what YouTube will be like in 10 years, if it'll even be around, if the partnership program will even be around... I think that people who try to make YouTube their full-time job are just kidding themselves, you know? Because you don't know that it's going to be sustainable. Sure, you can make good money now. I mean, more so, like four years ago. But you don't know what's going to happen in the future. You don't know. But um, I, I do want to say that I'm very happy with the channel. I'm not planning on quitting anytime soon. I've been having a lot of fun doing the videos. And I know that there was some disappointment about the fact that I don't do the request videos anymore. And I want to address that first off, actually, before I get to the more personal things that I want to talk about. I want to talk about that because I, I still occasionally get requests. I still occasionally get people who ask me when I'm going to do that sort of thing again. I'm not. I did it for something like six years. I did thousands of videos. And it got to the point where almost every request I was getting, and I was still getting like a lot of them, was either something that I really just did not want to put myself through, or it was something that I didn't think would make a good video, or like it would, you know, like not every bad game makes a good video. Some of them are just boring, you know, and it's hard to come up with funny things to say about a boring game. Occasionally you get something like, like the Winnie the Pooh video or Crazy Bus or something where it's so mind-destroyingly bad that I, I was able to come up with something or like, you know, like a gimmicky thing like when I did Ninja Baseball Batman, that you know, that was kind of cool. But, well, not that that was a bad game. I think it was actually a pretty good game. But, you know, just doing an, a, a, a long video like that, like a 10-minute video, just repeating the same three words, I thought that was pretty amusing. But... I was getting requests for stuff that I did already, and it's like, I, I would tell people, like, could you please use the search feature? And it, it's just because, like, those videos already exist, and I would have these, like, really weird interactions with people where, um, like, they would say, hey, I love your videos, would you do a video on this? And I would say, well, actually, I already did that one, and I would even give them, like, a, a link to it sometimes, if I had the time to do that. And they would say, oh, well, how about this? And I'd be like, well, I've done that too, and, and, and here's another link. And, and we'd go back and forth up to like five or six games and the person would start to get frustrated because every game that they requested was something that I had already done. And I'm getting frustrated because I'm like, 
why don't you go and watch and enjoy those videos? Those are the games you wanted to see me play. And I realized that it had nothing to do with people wanting to see a video. They wanted to be... They wanted to interact with me in a way that they would request the video and then I would do it. And it sort of puts it in their head that he did that because of me. And here's the thing. I never have and never will see myself as a celebrity. I don't feel comfortable with that sort of thing. Because I, I, I don't feel comfortable with the concept of celebrity. And there's... There's reasons behind that that I don't really want to get into. Maybe I'll talk about it in the future, but I don't like the concept of elevating people in your mind who you, you, you've you never met and you don't know. Just honestly, to me, it's exactly the same as hating someone that you've never met and that you've never interacted with. That's bizarre. You know, they're not a part of your life. They don't affect your life. So why would you hate them? And the same thing, I mean, I guess like some celebrities do affect your life and the way that their work might move you, but I, I'm, it, and, and I want to be that person that can affect somebody in a positive way, but I really just want to, get, you know, entertain. I, I don't want to be the guy who everybody is like, oh my God, he said my name in a video. And that makes me uncomfortable for various reasons. But there are a lot of reasons why I wanted the channel to change format. And one of them is very personal, and I've never mentioned it in the uh, nine years, I think it's been. It's been nine years since I've been on YouTube. Um, the first three, I didn't make videos, but I was part of YouTube. and So six years since I started making videos. And I've never mentioned it. Um, and it's, an, it's, a, it's a big part of my life. And uh, uh, it's personal, but it's, it's something that I feel I'm ready to expose to you guys. Because I do want to interact with you guys. Um, I used to do videos with the camera. I don't anymore because the camera is old and it... it you know, everything's in HD now, and I have this, like, old SD thing that takes, like, AA batteries, and it's, like... And there are other reasons, and I want to get into that. I, I just want to say that, um... Okay. When I was 17 years old, uh, I, I lived with my parents, of course, and, you know, they live in a... They live on a mountain, and uh, you, you if you watch some of the older videos where I'm there, you can see... I have filmed, like, outside in some parts. You can see it's all wooded area. I'm still in a wooded area, but I'm not on a mountain anymore. Uh, but they live in a mountain. They still live there. And uh, winter is just a, a fucking nightmare in the country, especially if you live on a mountain, because you can't get anywhere. And, you know, just having to shovel a lot of snow is part of it. And I was driving this car that was actually not even my car. It was my parents' car that they had, like, permanently loaned me at that point. It was this old Buick, this old 1992 Buick. And I had to park it at the top of the driveway. There's a driveway that goes on a down slope towards the house. And it, during the winter, it was icy. Once you brought it down, you couldn't get it back up because it didn't have four-wheel drive or anything like that. So I had to park it at the top, and I, I had to shovel myself a spot. And it had to be completely off the road so the plows wouldn't hit it and everything. So I was shoveling snow, and... um. As I was turning with a with a shovel full of snow, because my technique was to just do it as fast as possible. Because you know, don't take breaks, just do it. You know, and uh, I was going really fast. And you hear about people who have heart attacks doing this, you know, but I wasn't thinking about anything like that, and I didn't have a heart attack. But what happened was, as I turned to dump the shovel full of snow somewhere else I hurt my back and uh, like it twisted all up and I was in a lot of pain and uh, then I, I I went down to the house which is a trip that took a very long time because I was in a lot of pain and I couldn't move effectively and nobody was home but me so I just went into the medicine cabinet and I found aspirin, or maybe it was ibuprofen. It was a generic sort of over-the-counter thing, and I took like six of them, and 
laid in my bed and just, I called out from work, you know, that's when I, I worked at Wendy's. I was, I was 17. I worked at Wendy's. I called out, told them I hurt my back and I took it easy for a couple of days, you know, but here's the thing. I didn't know that that moment, that one twist was going to be something that changed my whole life. And it has, um, I have lived with pain since then. Not always a lot of pain, okay? But I can only remember the few times where I was not experiencing any pain at all. And I'm, I'm 34 years old. This happened when I was 17, so you do the math, you know? It's, it's, it's well over a decade that I've lived with pain. And when you live with chronic pain, I'll, I'll tell you a couple of things, and I'm sure some people, I know for a fact there are some subscribers who know exactly what it's like, and there are some who have no idea what it's like. And I also know that it's different for some people than it is for others, but I wanted to tell you what it was for me. Um, first of all, I can tell you that you do get used to it. It's, it's not something that is constantly on your mind, because... You know, in the healthcare industry, you know, when they ask you, like, and I am in the healthcare industry, so I, I also ask this question sometimes, um, on a scale from 1 to 10, where are you? The pain scale, with a 1 being no pain at all, and a 10 being the worst pain you can imagine. And, um, you know, I'm always at, like, a 3, you know, always. And after a while the scale kind of becomes meaningless because you become so used to that low ache that that becomes like your one. It, it slides it all out of whack. So it's almost like those moments, those brief moments where you're not experiencing any pain at all. It, it's kind of like you're sitting there thinking, what is going on? What's different? Like, it's almost like you don't even know what's going on. And then you go like, oh, my back's not hurting, you know? Now, I, ne I didn't go to a doctor because I was 17 and I was stupid. And the reason I was stupid is because I was 17. I think all 17 year olds are stupid. I think all teenagers are stupid. And that's not a not, I know there's teenagers listening to this and I'm not saying you're stupid to hurt you. It's just that everybody is stupid in that time period because your body is way ahead of your brain. Your emotions are all over the place. I, you know, I may be 34, but I remember being a teenager and I remember some of the stupid shit I would say or the stupid shit I would do or the stupid shit I would think. And I'm not ashamed of it because I think that's everybody. I think that the, the only exception would be people who go through like a large amount of trauma when they're kids and they have to grow up really fast, you know, um, like Tanya, for example, and I don't want to get into her personal business, but Tanya had to grow up really fast. She never really got to be a dumb teenager, but the vast majority of people who are teenagers are, are dumb. And I don't mean like dumb, like, duh, you know, I mean, just impulsive, reckless, you know, you, you don't think of your own mortality. You don't think of the future. You, you think of the moment and, and it's almost enviable because ignorance is bliss and living in the moment is thrilling. But eventually you get to the point where you become more careful, you become more laid back. Shit that seems so important to you right now becomes so unimportant. And you wonder, how did I ever think that was important? And I really do hope that some of the younger uh, viewers out there, or in this case listeners, are listening to this. And, uh, you know, like the shit that you think is so important is not is not. And I'm not saying that to belittle your troubles, but everybody when they're a teenager thinks that every little trouble is the end of the world, except when it comes to things regarding their own health. Because every teenager secretly thinks that they're immortal. And you don't think about that, you know what I mean? So, that being said, I never went to the doctor. I never got my back looked at, you know? To this day, I don't know the exact scope of what I did to myself. But, you know, I would go through this period of not, you know, it kind of aches, but not that much really. And then every once in a while, like about once or twice a year, 
I would throw my back out really bad. Sometimes it would be I was lifting something heavy or I was doing something strenuous and it happened. Or sometimes it would be I was putting my pants on and all of a sudden I had a, like a, a a seizure sort of, not a seizure, but a, a what do you call it? Like a, like a spasm, you know, that's the word I was looking for, a spasm in the back. And then all of a sudden you're in a lot of pain. And uh, Or sometimes you just wake up in pain. And you think I must have slept wrong or something like that, you know. And I've lived with this for too long, you know. Now, kind of recently, I'm, you know, this is, it's, it's June. It's June 13th. And I'm going back to about six months ago, except December 24th, Christmas Eve. Uh, we had Christmas Eve at my sister's place. It was really my grandmother's place, but my sister and her husband and her two boys live with my grandmother. And they, uh have pretty much taken the house over, so I kind of think of it as our place. And anyway, I went over there for... We all had Christmas Eve there, and it, I was feeling good. I was off from work that night. I didn't have to worry about nothing. It was good food. There was there was wine. There was family members. You know, some of them are annoying, but my two nephews were there, and that's great. And I was just sitting down for the antipasta, and, uh, and I had a really, really bad spasm in my back. Just... Just the act of sitting in the chair, and all of a sudden, like, I couldn't sit there. Sitting hurt, standing hurt. I went, I was like, I kind of just excused myself and walked away from the table. And I went on the couch, and everybody was sort of like really worried, and that was hurting a lot. And then somebody told me, lay on the floor, and that was like slightly better. I was laying on my back. And I remember my, my nephew, Bobby, came over and asked me why I was on the floor. And I told him, and he decided to stay there with me, which was very sweet of him. And my sister put a some sort of patch on my back. I think it was lidoderm, and I don't know that it did anything. I left it on for like a day. I, I took it off like the next day when I was going to take a shower, but I, I didn't. I don't know if it helped or not. Um, and somebody gave me a painkiller. I think it was like you know something simple like like a leaf or something. Anyway, um, I you know eventually was able to get up, and it hurt. You know, it hurt just to move. Um, but the pain pills were, were kicking in, and, you know, I uh, the next couple of days I took it easy, and it was starting to get better. And then slightly after New Year's, it happened again, and uh, and this was really rough. And, and I had to call out from work, which I don't do usually, and um, I decided that I had enough. I wasn't going to live with this. It was happening more often now. That was only two weeks apart. And I, I didn't want to live like that anymore. So I went to a doctor. I went to an urgent care clinic, which was uh, an outpatient facility of a nearby hospital. And I had it looked at. And the doctor there, um, you know, he asked me a bunch of questions. And I'm not sure I answered them all absolutely correctly. But I gave him the best answers that I could at the time. And... He told me that I had, like, one of the muscles in my back was really, really clenched down. And it was very tight, and that was what was causing my pain. And it was sort of similar to, like, like a tetanus thing where a muscle clamps down, and it's just really painful. And it doesn't really support you like it should. And he gave me uh, prescriptions for naproxen, uh, prescription strength naproxen, and flexorol, which is a muscle relaxer. And if you've watched some of the Paper Mario videos recently that were actually recorded in January and in February, early February, you'll notice that I was stoned in those videos, and that was because of the flexoral. And, uh, yeah, it was funny and everything, and, I, and it was nice to not be in pain, but it was kind of a pain in the ass to be so goddamn out of my mind the whole time. It, it really was frustrating. But after... Like two weeks on those meds, um, I came off of them and I felt a little better. I actually stopped taking them when I still had some left. And on the achy days, I would take a naproxen and I still had like two flexor left and I just like kept them for a rainy day. But anyway, what I was getting at was it, it never really went back to normal. I was still like limping around. I was still not all there. And there were people who were worried about me and, and I was like, well, it's not that bad, you know? And they would say, well, where are you on the pain scale? And I would say, well, like a five. But that was becoming normal. 
And, and, and that's, you know, that's so worrisome, you know? But then, you know, the other day it happened again. And I, and this was just waking up and I got up and it wasn't too terrible, but I felt this very familiar tightness and I knew it was happening. And, and I just, you know, I didn't know what to do about it. And then I went to work and when I got home, it was even worse. And it's, it's the worst when I wake up in the morning and I, after work, I, I went to the doctor again. I saw, well, I went to the same clinic and I saw a different doctor. And, you know, he gave me the Flexeril again, and I'm taking that again. And, uh, and he gave me a high dose of Motrin instead of a high dose of Naproxen, which is like, I don't really know what the difference is. But, like, when I told him that the other doctor gave me Naproxen, he was like, well, I'm going to give you Motrin. It's actually a higher dose, but I don't, I don't know what the difference is. I don't care. You know what I mean? If it works, it works. You know what I mean? It could be aspirin. I, I don't want to take anything like crazy where I wouldn't be able to dry. I want to take Percocet. I don't want to be out of my mind. The Flexeril already has enough an effect on me. And I'll be honest with you. I should have taken these pills a little while ago, but I'm sitting here recording this video. So I'm actually not feeling amazing right now. I'm not in a lot of pain, but I am feeling it. And, I, and when I tell you this has affected everything, I, I want to talk about the channel and, and the switch to doing only LPs and... You know, part of the, this started with the, the, the fact that, I don't know if you guys remember, but there would be days, there were a lot of days where I was just missing things. And, and I mean, there was like things that I wanted to do, like I wanted to do a second season of the Gamers Encyclopedia. And I still want to do that. And I wanted to do, and I wanted to revive the VMX show and, 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 and retool that and do something different. And yes, part of it is having two jobs. Part of it is working in a healthcare facility and working in Kazara Studios, especially considering that I'm now president of the company and my responsibilities are much greater and that I work every day. And yeah, part of it is just not having the time. But part of it was also some days I didn't feel up to sitting there and recording. I didn't feel like it. And I would just be like, I'm just not going to do it. And some days I would feel fine and I would record whatever videos were supposed to go up that day. And I would get this bug like I really wanted to record more. But I would say, well, I already did the videos for today, so I'm going to stop, you know. And it was right around when I was doing Lufia and the Fortress of Doom that there something came up where I wasn't going to be able to do videos for a few days. So I recorded those videos for those days ahead of time because I was feeling pretty good. And I realized that I like doing that. And I realized that if I just recorded when I was feeling good and didn't bother with it when I was not feeling good, I would have a nice backlog of videos. So, and, and I realized that it wouldn't be fair to do requests like that. I was getting tired of the whole request system already. I had done it for six years. So that's when I went to just, just doing all LPs. And I know there's a lot of LP channels out there. And I like to think that I do bring something unique. I do think that the videos are funny. I do think they're entertaining. I think some of my best work has been done since then. I think the Paper Mario videos are really funny. I think the Super Mario World... For some reason, Mario brings out the funny in me. The Super Mario World LP was very amusing. I thought I even watched it and was laughing at myself, you know? But um, I think some people are not giving it a chance because they like, you know, like the one-off videos, and I get that. But I urge them to just try, you know, um, just jump in and watch a video and see what you think, because I am still joking. I'm not just doing a walkthrough. I'm still me. Um, but I only record when I'm feeling up to it. Like earlier today, I recorded a lot of two games that you won't see for like a while, you know, because I'm so ahead on videos and it's been great to just upload stuff and uh, not worry about it. You know, and I have this great backlog, and that if I don't feel like recording, I don't really have to. Um, so to anybody that's disappointed by the change, I'm sorry, but, you know, part of it was the fact that there were some days where I'm just not up to doing it. And I don't mean that I can't be bothered or that I don't want to, but that I was physically not up to it, you know? That when you're... I'll tell you another thing about living with pain is even after you get used to it, you it makes you tired. Because I think the process of coping with it takes something out of you. So, and, and plus the fact that you do the, your best healing when you're sleeping. So you'd get sleepy, you know. Um, plus, you know, pain meds make you sleepy. Muscle relaxants make you sleepy. So, 
Anyway, uh, when I when I'm low on the meds, I'm on light duty at work, and I'm probably going. If I'm not feeling like good by then, I'm going to probably go to like a specialist and have them look at it because it's it's happening too often. And I, you know what? I mean, like I said, 1997, this happened, this initial injury, and I think it's been aggravated since then. Because, uh, b- believe it or not, for for a big fat motherfucker like me, <laughs> I'm actually pretty physical. You know, I actually do a lot of physical things because at my healthcare job, I, I take care of brain injured people and I have to be able to lift people out of their beds and transfer them to wheelchairs and, and, and help them with just, just getting around, you know, and yes, we have, uh, things in place where they can do as much of it as they can and that there is prosthetics and safety equipment and stuff, but it's still a very physical job, um, at times. So and and plus i i do enjoy just moving around i don't like to just sit in one position the whole day um you know i'm not a big fat motherfucker because i don't exercise i'm a big ma- fat motherfucker because i eat a lot <laughs> so and and that is just the way i am you know and that's that's okay i mean uh you know i'm happy with myself in that sense i i enjoy life i don't worry about things like that um but but getting older, I you know I see some people who are putting themselves through hell to be fit, and and they, they think, well I'm going to live a few years longer doing this, and I said yeah, but you're going to be miserable, and I see these people that they get up at the crack of dawn just so they could go to a gym and and punish themselves before work and then work for eight hours and then it's back to the gym and then they got their own lives and they got kids and everything, and I'm just like. You know, I mean, and then when they do eat food, it's like they don't enjoy it, you know? So I'm, I'm just like, I get a lot of enjoyment out of life. I get a lot of enjoyment out of food. I get a lot of enjoyment out of people. So I'm happy, you know what I mean? And and yeah, maybe my life will be shorter than some people's, but I think it'll be happier. And I think that's more important. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. Maybe you disagree with me. Maybe you agree with me. It's not really the point of the video. The point of the video is that I wanted to engage you guys again. And I and I, I try really hard. Like, I, I had started that thing, like, right when I went to LPs only, I started that fucking arcade Thursday thing, you know? And I did that for a while, but then it, it became where I just couldn't every Thursday, and some days I would be able to do it, and some days I wouldn't be able to. And then I would forget sometimes, because I'd miss a few weeks, because I wasn't feeling well. And then... I would feel okay, but I'd forget about it because I hadn't done it in so long. Um, you know, Civilization Saturday didn't happen today. That that I don't forget about, but that is more due to a time constraint thing. But, you know, and that's the thing. It's Everything is so time consuming. I, I, I work so... I don't even know how many hours I work at Kazara Studios in a week. A lot. You know, way more than 40. I would estimate like 60 to 70, to be honest. And then 40 plus, you know, anywhere from 40 to 45 at my healthcare job. And then there's just the matter of, of having a life. You know, I have friends, I have family, I have a girlfriend, you know, and, and I got to make time for all these people because, you know, these are my loved ones. These are the people that I want to be in my life and I want to engage with. And, and you know what, you guys, this is why I'm doing this video because I want to engage with you and I, and I want to not apologize, because I don't think I did anything wrong, but sort of explain why I've been less available to you guys. Because, yeah, in the past, I used to be, I, I used to whip out the camera all the time. I used to record random things. And you know what? I, I come up with the coolest fucking ideas sometimes, and I don't get to do them. Like, if you guys remember those fucking bunny videos from a few weeks ago, a lot of you guys thought that was very funny. Those were all recorded at the same time at my sister's place. And I told her, like, what a reaction they got, and we got to do that again and everything. But here's the thing. I already detailed all the shit that I do, and then there's her, who's a mother of two kids, and and also works. So she doesn't always have the time either. And it, it, it's just like, you know, it, it it it's a bitch to do anything. It really is. But I'm trying my best, you know? And I want to tell you guys that I'm putting out content for you because I enjoy it, and, and and I enjoy entertaining, and I hope that you guys are entertained, and I do see the comments. I do wish there were more comments, um, 
but, you know, that's the thing. I mean, two days ago, I was supposed to record the list critics with Tanya. And it didn't happen because I was in pain. Tanya forgot. Okay. I could have called her and reminded her. But that was a particularly rough day. Even with the medication. So, I just want you guys to understand that sometimes, or a lot of the time, I want to do so much that I can't do, you know? And that's kind of why I've reached the, the breaking point, quite a, w w not with YouTube, but with, with my fucking back. You know, I'm, I'm tired of hurting. I'm tired of uh, living like this. Oh, yeah, I enjoy myself, you know what I mean? I have fun, you know? But... It's hard to when it's this bad, as it has been in the last week. <sighs> so, there's not much else to say. There's not much else to say at all. I'm going to continue doing the LPs. And, you know, and, and because you guys have been so great and so patient with me, I'm going to tell you about all the LPs that I... And I know you're patient if you're listening after 31 minutes. I'm going to tell you guys all the LPs that I've recorded and am recording. So as you guys have noticed that I, I have like an RPG and an action game running at the same time. And right now the RPG is Paper Mario and the, the action game is Shovel Knight. When Shovel Knight is finished, I will do... Um, just looking at this. I did Duke Nukem 3D already. Uh, after Shovel Knight is the original Bioshock. After Bioshock is... Uh, see, these are not in order, so I have to make sure I'm saying this right. After Shovel Knight is Bioshock. After Bioshock is Bastion. And after Bastion is the angry video game nerd adventure game, which I haven't beaten yet. I'm at the end of it, but it's... It's really fucking hard. Uh, I recorded a few videos earlier of it with, with Tanya, and she had never really seen the game other than like his review and the trailer. So she was watching me play, and she was like, "I can't believe how hard this is." Uh, you know, after okay, so that's the action stuff. The RP after Paper Mario, and Paper Mario is going to go on for a while because it's a long fucking game. But after Paper Mario is um, Breath of Fire Two. And after Breath of Fire 2 is Breath of Death 7, which is a very short game. Uh, what is it? it was only like, it's 15 videos. And then after Breath of Death 7 is South Park The Stick of Truth, which I'm still recording. I'm about a third through that. So, you know, I just wanted to let you guys know what kind of content to look forward to. Um, and I was thinking, actually, and I want you guys, really, I really want you to sound off in the comments. And I want you to tell me whether you think this is a good idea. Instead of trying to limit myself to doing a specific thing like an Arcade Thursday or a show or something, if maybe once a week I just do this. I sit down with a microphone and I just talk about, you know, whatever the fuck's on my mind. I might, I might do other things like... I don't know. I, I've been wanting to do q and I haven't done that in a long, long time. I've been wanting to do q and I've been wanting to engage with you guys more. And I get great... I get great comments on Facebook. And then there are people who add me on Skype and I talk to them there. And, you know, and, and yeah, I get, I get some weirdos sometimes. But uh, that comes with the territory. I haven't had any, like, serious trolls in a really long time. You know, and that's good. Occasionally I get these comments like, you fucking suck, you know, you're fat and you're stupid. And I'm like, okay, yeah. I, I'm not, I'm well past the point of getting any enjoyment from mocking these people, you know what I mean? At this point I just kind of roll my eyes and, you know, and just, psh, whatever, man. So, and maybe that's the better way of handling it because it's happened a whole lot less, you know. It used to happen all the time. There are certain videos I have from the past that when I see somebody posted a comment on and I get an email alert, I'm like, oh, this should be fun. You know, anything to do with wrestling or uh, 
or Dragon Ball Z or Odd World, you know, because God forbid that I don't like something that they like, you know, and I make fun of it a little, you know, it's all fucking jokes anyway, but I, I tell me what you think of just, just sitting down and saying whatever's on my mind on like maybe a semi, semi-weekly basis, you know, it would probably be on Saturdays. I don't know. Tell me what you think of it. And, uh, you know, as for the whole back pain thing, I just want to let you guys know that, I, I mean, yeah, it, it's it's almost 20 years. It's 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 18 years that I've since I've injured my back. And there are times where it's fine, and there are times where I walk with a limp. And, and you know, it's not the only issue I have. I You know, I'm like I said, I'm 34 years old. I'm gonna, This year in December, I'll be turning 35. I'm going to be like a middle-aged guy, you know? Which is funny, because I, I, you know, I'm sort of just embracing the idea of being in my 30s, and I kind of enjoy it, but yeah, there is things about getting older. Um, for example, about three years ago, I was at a doctor, uh, not for pain or anything like that, but just, uh, just taking a, a routine physical, and the doctor told me I had arthritis. And I was like, no. That was my reaction. I didn't know. I think I laughed and said no. And I was like, what are you talking about? Because she said I had it in my legs. My legs don't hurt. And I said that. My legs don't hurt. Isn't arthritis painful? And, you know, I had the, the wrong idea of it. And, you know, and what the doctor told me was that most people by 30 have arthritis in their legs and it's completely normal. And it usually doesn't become symptomatic until you're in your 50s. And she gave me a few hints on to, you know, like what to do to mitigate that, but that it was completely normal. And it's only in my legs. It's not like it's in my hands or anything, you know. And then when I thought about it, I, well, you know what? It does explain a few things. You know, it explains why my joints pop whenever I kneel down. You know, it explains why they creak sometimes, you know. But, uh, yeah, it is just a part of getting older and... Um, and I hope you all go through it, because I don't want anybody to just die young. Experiencing getting older has its drawbacks, but it also has a lot of perks. So, You know, I think I've, I, this, it's nearly four, I, I intended this to be like 15 minutes long. And it's 37 and a half minutes long right now. So I'm, like, I've rambled long enough. Uh, I do want your thoughts, you know what I mean? I'm not looking for, like, pity or, you know, anything like that, you know, but I, I, I would like your thoughts, and, um, you know, I, I, I want to uh, engage you guys more, so I, I hope to do this more in the future, and I hope you enjoy the videos that I put up. I mean, like, another thing that I've been working on, I, was I was putting up all those Mortal Kombat videos of, of, like, all the interactions and stuff and some random online matches, and I still play Mortal Kombat X a whole lot because I fucking love it. But at the same time, it's like such a, you know, like I don't always get the time to sit there and edit together clips. Uh, I think I have one that I haven't edited. Yeah, there's one sitting there that I haven't edited. I, for, I think it's, uh, let me bring up one of them and I'll tell you who it is. Uh, it's for it's for Aaron Black, so I have like the Aaron Black thing. It's not edited, but it's there. It's all, all the little clips. And I hope to do that, you know. But, you know, that's just a thing. I, I don't know, man. I'm going to let you guys go. I got, I got to take my medicine and I got to get to bed because I got to work tonight. So, you know, I want to talk about that and, uh, and dude, and, and, you know, like, and if you don't want to like make a YouTube comment, Facebook links in the description, you can come to Facebook. You, you can even send me a private message on there if you don't want anybody to see it. You know, I do respond as much as I can to Facebook stuff. I mean, yeah, sometimes I get a thing and I'm like, I don't reply. And it's not that I don't want to, but sometimes, like, it's coincidence. I'll get the message while I'm, like, driving or something, or I'm in the middle of something important, and I'll look at my phone, and I'll be like, oh, I'll have to remember to reply to that later. And then I don't remember. So, <laughs> I'm sorry if you... But try to try to send me a message, and I will try to set aside time to specifically answer people. Um, I'd love to do q and I Streaming. Oh, man, I didn't even get to talk about that. I, everybody's asking me, when's the next Twitch stream? When are you going to upload videos from the last Twitch stream? They're, they're not edited right now. I, man, I want to do it all the time. Every time I do a live stream on Twitch, it is one of the most fun experiences. 
it's the only reason I go, they go on for so long. Some of them are like eight, nine hours long. Um, I love doing it. I love the interactions. I love the chat room. I love talking to you guys live. Um, I want to do more. I want to play more Chronicles of Dark Lord. I want to play more Binding of Isaac Rebirth, maybe Dungeons of Dreadmore, maybe even Mortal Kombat X, but to set up aside all that time, it's, it's, it doesn't always happen, man. And then there are, you know, and then there's always the question, like, is that going to be a day where I'm feeling okay? Or is that going to be a day where I feel like shit and I, I don't want to move, you know? So that's the reason there hasn't been a Twitch stream since January. Um, sorry about that, guys. I'm not, I'm not giving up. Okay. I'm not giving up, but I wanted to give you guys a little insight into my life. So you understand the why of things. But I'll let you guys go. I got to get to bed. I got to take my pills. I got to go to bed. It's nearly noon. I start working my healthcare job at midnight. And I know it's going to take me at least an hour and a half to fall asleep. Because it takes a while for those pills to kick in. And I'm probably going to be laying in bed, looking at my phone, watching YouTube videos and shit like that. So, um, you know what? No, I'll save that for next week. Uh, I, I will talk to you guys again. So, uh, you know, peace out, everybody. Thanks for comments. Thanks for all the support you guys have given me. There have been people here who have been subscribers for a really long time. And I know that some people, they get tired of the same thing. They unsubscribe. I bear them no ill will. There are channels that I get tired of. You know what I mean? And I don't, I just say, oh, I'm just going to unsubscribe. I don't give the person a hard time. I, you know, and I appreciate that, that, you know, people just do it quietly. Um, I have no problem with that. But, I did want to talk to you guys, and please, leave me some com I want a lot of comments on this video. It doesn't have to be a lot of views, because you know what? I'm not even going to put ads on this one. I, I just want comments. So, uh, give me your thoughts. Talk to me on Facebook, Skype, whatever. The name's NecroVMX on everything. Peace out.